we are here with our guest today, Yael, and she has emailed us in with a bit of an apartment issue. I have a really tiny apartment and I want to spruce it up. And I also have an ironing board that never gets put away. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, all all <laughs> so um, what we've done then is we have enlisted the help of another fabulous mother-daughter team, uh, Kristen and Sharon Jankowitz, and they've come all the way out from Chicago to uh, help solve this little issue. So what do you girls have uh, in store for us today? We came up with a really great idea. I think that you're going to like this. You can customize this to match your colors. What we'll do is build a little tabletop that you can put on the top of your ironing board like the lid of a box and it will have a nice full finish on it so it'll look like a pretty tabletop. Very good. And this is just totally something functional. You can serve drinks off of it, use it to just sit down and eat real quick. I mean, it's a table. Oh, for sure. You know, it, it's functional. You can whip the top off and iron any time, but it's, <laughs> it's really cost effective. For under $30, you can create a beautiful finished piece of furniture, and so we'll teach you the technique to do it. Okay, awesome. So cool. you're kind of, you're feeling this. She's like, I don't know where this is going. Let's try it. Cool. So I'm thinking this is probably going to get a little messy. I'm guessing we're doing some paint and all that kind of stuff. So um, we're going to head outside and kind of get this project going. Great. Let's do it. Okay. So <laughs> we're going to get started and some things are going to get a little messy. We're actually going to show you a quick, easy way to make an apron. And since someone doesn't have theirs, um, you're just going to take a plain old trash bag and uh, pull it through the loop on the very top. And this is actually what's going to go around your neck. And then um, you can just go ahead and wrap this around you. And I thought it was all too fitting to um, use some caution tape. And you're just going to use this kind of as your waistband. What? I think, well, if anyone can pull it off, it's perfect. Yeah, it's, right. You know what? It's very cute. Well, yeah. Very huggy here. And you're just going to wrap it around like this. Better and ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da. You have Vogue, Vogue. a fabulous apron. All right. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now we can get started because everyone is free of getting messy. Okay. Perfect. You want to cover your work surface. This is a messy project. When you're spray painting, there's sometimes a lot of overspray, so you want to make sure that you do it in a place where if the overspray gets on it, you don't care. You know, some t people care about their grass. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't want spray Not paint. Not me. Um, we base coat the board first with a clear acrylic spray. Um, give it a shot of clear acrylic. Let it dry maybe 10 minutes. Um, then hit it with some light sandpaper. Just a real light coat. You have to make sure to use a tack cloth. What's this? It looks like cheesecloth, but it's got sticky stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's sticky. Sticky. it sticks on your hands. And that will get all of the dust off of the board. Then, um, what's our next step, Chris? Our first step then is going to be just to take regular Ziploc bags. Um, we think that they work great because they're, they've got a pretty good thick consistency, so they really hold their shape and you want it to be really crinkly. Avoid dry cleaning bags, those are awful. Yeah, and then we're going to get messy. So we're going to put on our gloves, everybody. This isn't surgery, but it's... I'll be I know, I feel so official. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. Oh, thank you, man. All right, here we go, we got it on. So make sure that you've got one on both I hands. <laughs> Because you're going to be getting messy. Okay, I yeah, need are. about a tablespoon of white paint in there, okay? I'm going to guesstimate on my tablespoon because uh, we all know math is not my forte. <laughs> That's about enough, right? Oh, no, a little, little bit more. A there tablespoon. you go. There you I'm go. always taught okay. to be generous with the paint. Okay, <laughs> and a, about equal parts water. That's great. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Yael, do you want to mix it up for us? Sure. Yeah, just with a craft stick. Make work. <laughs> Perfect. And okay. Actually, that's really good the way that she did it because you want to have some really watery and then other parts thicker. Right. That makes some great patterns on here. So you didn't even know how good you did. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, when you pick this up, you want it to be kind of in both hands. So you get two hands full of it, like this. Crumble it up, and then we will just dip into this paint. Thank you. So we just dip in the paint. Oh, it is. And exactly. then you just put, place it down in the board and start rolling. So there is a method to the madness. There yeah. is a method. <laughs> and it's perfect. You can see that there's a lot of different variation. You'll get some really big, thick, watery parts and then other just little flecks. And unlike the old fashioned um, sponge painting stuff yeah. where you felt like you needed a really in, uh, consistent coverage. Oh, okay. 
this you want it to look really organic and natural. Uh -huh. So right. if you get some heavy spots and light spots, that's great. So you can't it's make better. a mistake. You can't right. make a mistake. It'll be fine. Just make sure that when you're rolling, you don't forget to do the edges of your board because a real piece of stone would run right would up. Would be even. So okay. give it a few pats before you quit that color. So that's all you're going to do for this first step, for the really, first, right? For that's for the first coat. Then we'd give it a shot of acrylic spray. Um, thank you, Anna. Um, give it a shot of acrylic spray, let it dry for a little while, Thank and then you. start your next color. Our next color that we used was a bronze, and so um, we will just skip all of that stuff to having this. So you layered the paint, you do another layer with the bronze, right? right? You okay. layer the bronze, then and hit it with. Is there a specific bronze or anything that just looks good? Because you want to use a lot of color. You want to pick colors that go with your decor. That's what's oh, cool okay. about this, is you can pick your own colors. So if you were into pastel, you could do like fun, funky you colors You sure too. could, okay. exactly. Yeah. So you're just going to keep, you're going to do your three layers with the glaze in between each, and when you're done with that, this is what it's going to look like. Oh, wow. Isn't it that pretty? is really cool. See, but then why do I feel like mine would not look like this? <laughs> you well, yours what? probably wouldn't make it. <laughs> Megan, the cool thing is that almost the more random you do it, the better it will, it will look. It will okay. look more realistic. Um, they get a little too heavy sometimes. Um, if, if you get heavy, you can take a rag and just pat it on there and it'll pick up some of the paint. Oh, okay. Well, what do you think? This is going to match your apartment pretty cool, huh? Yeah, pretty nice. Yeah. 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 Do you feel like you would never spiffy. think of this? Like, I see these things and I'm just like, who thinks of this? Like, <laughs> I would never. Well, there's one more finishing touch to really make it look like stone. Because anyone could kind of do this, but we'll give you the trick that puts it over the edge. Your kitty kitty. Exactly. <laughs> you need some feathers. Um, Anna found these great um, kitty toys for us to use on this project. But um, some Sometimes you can find them in the craft department, just in the feather aisle. I was oh. say, because somewhere there is a cat pouty. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Be sure to replace your toy. Or, or um, an Indian costume. Anyway, we want the paint to be the same consistency that we had before. And this time we're using white for the, the um, graining that we're going to put in here. Okay, so we can use any leftover paint from the last, the other side. Right. Exactly. So don't throw it away. Whatever colors you have, just oh, hang on to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah you need to bring it back. Oh, I love this. Look at the gold and the bronze and the white. It's just really... It looks pretty realistic if yeah, you really get it. Yeah, really. You can even get some, like, yellow in it. It's really cool. The metallics are really great because they're so dimensional that way, mixed in with the flat. Okay, destroy your kitty toy. Oh. <laughs> oh. But you've got a good handle there, then. Okay, no, here's one for you, Neil. That's Thank what you. I like. Okay, what we do is just dip in here. I can dip this in. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, Another. just kind of. <laughs> okay. Ooh. And then you start out just lightly and, and kind of think lightning bolts, maybe. Oh, okay. Is we maybe need a little too? more paint. Okay, so. Yeah, and you can just I keep adding the paint in water. Right, just as keep mixing it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll have it a little thicker so it'll show up for the camera. The trick is, too, that you want to use kind of um, the tip rather than the whole length of your feather to get those really delicate lines. And as you can see from my mom's feather, that when you do it for a while, it will kind of spread and break apart, which makes it look more like the natural. And you can always go back over areas you've already gone over. Or... Right, and if you don't like what you've done, because you put down the acrylic spray, you can kind of wipe it off. Oh, really? Yeah. So okay. that makes it a little bit easier. Here, why don't you show her with a fresh feather <laughs> okay, quick to I'll get her started. Because I love foolproof. Because yeah. I feel like in my project there'll be a lot of wiping. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. A really good idea to make it look realistic, if you want it to look realistic, is to kind of follow some of the patterns that you're seeing in here. So sort of just outline what you've got going on. I mean, that kind of just makes it look like those cracks you would really see in the stone. Right, the, the, the veining ones. that you would the, see. The, 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 the cracks, veins, all veins. Varicose veins. Aren't you taking geology? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll let you try this. That does look really cool. Isn't that neat? So just kind of oh, uh, there you go. She's and she then hold out on it. I know. You can perfect. alternate pressure between heavier pressure and lighter pressure, or using just the very tip of the feather, or like the whole. So there you go. Yeah. And even if you're kind of shaky, you know, sort of lightning bolty. Yeah. That's great. perfect. Oh, there we go. You got it. You, you got can't it. go wrong. Okay. <laughs> so let's show you what it looks like when it's all done. Um, now we have the veining on the whole board. Um, Kristen also begged the guy at the home improvement place to cut these to size. 
So she took her measurement, the length and the width of the board. Um, you add this little bit extra on there so that you have the coverage. And a little bit of wood glue all along the side will hold it on, a few finishing nails. And, and that'll do it. So we put half on, and I'll so you can see what board. that looks like. Okay, so it will go around all four sides. It'll be on all four sides. And table. the reason you have this on is so, that 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 would, so that it won't slip off the ironing board. Oh, so you've okay. got so you can put like drinks this. on here, and you know it's stable. And you're gonna line the top up with the top of your sideboard so that it's gonna hang over your ironing board. Oh, okay. Okay, and so you put just pop in a few finishing nails along the edge. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got it. We glazed. forgot the glue. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there we go. So you'll have glue and then nails, and then then the little finishing nails, and so it gives Very you a really cool. nice looking tabletop. Wow, I'll say this so. is really cool. I cannot wait to see what it looks like on the ironing board. And what did you do to the ironing board itself? We spray painted the legs just okay. to match this. So I think Yale did. We do yours black. I think they're black. Yeah, there's. I, we oh, brought it down for. Okay. Yep, so we've got this board and we're ready to put our completed top on it. Maybe we should do that inside? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. perfect. I'm kind of excited to see how this is all going to together. <laughs> this looks great, guys. Oh, now we just need the top. Okay. Grab that right there. And then this really just sets right on top? Exactly, just hangs over. And oh it's sturdy. Oh my gosh, I never thought of this. I know, it ties everything in, doesn't it? it does. This is like totally functional. Grab that. I know, I'm like, what? I'd like to go this. Oh, that just ties the whole room together. Who would ever As know? I plan here, do it this way. Who would ever know that you had an ironing board under there? Because I wouldn't. And this is what I'm talking about, and I'm sure you back me up and say, like, where do you think of this? Like, I would never look at an ironing board and, and see this, and it's such a good idea. And you, she, know, you know, you can do this whole project for under $30. Really? Mm -hmm. She's like, I love it. It. Right. <laughs> it looks good. Now you've got a great new table. Well, so, Gail, yeah, thank you so much for you, writing in. And I appreciate it. Kristen yeah. and your oh, mom were fabulous you. and a great idea. You girls know the drill when creativity knocks. Open, open the, the door. door. <laughs> awesome.